after our road trip in the Isle of Skye, we decided to make a night stop in Glasgow. We're gonna be spending the morning in this city and then we'll head to Edinburgh. Hello everybody! Como esta? Ian Lewis here and welcome to Exploring Together. Today is another day with rain, strong wind and grey skies. But my explorers, that will never ever stop us from continuing exploring. That's why I'm wearing my boots, I have my coat on and my backpack is also safety and dry. Because we can't miss any single day. Today, it is time to explore our first city of this beautiful country of Scotland. Without a further ado, welcome to Glasgow. Currently are in the Buchanan, Buchanan, Buchanan Street, <laughs> which is the main street of Glasgow. Of course, as almost every single main street of almost every single city in this world, it is full of stores. And of course, things that you will find here is stuff like Hard Rock, Victoria's Secret. But there is one store which is actually worth going to. And look at this. Ooh, guys, I should get me one of these. Look at that. Truly, I'm actually thinking about getting one. If you're looking for a calendar, Scotland is the place to find one. It makes out Loch Ness t-shirt. Wow, look at this hat. How does it look? Now I feel pretty much Sherlock Holmes. Hmm. Indeed, Watson. <laughs> enough shopping because that's not what we do in exploring together sometimes we might do a little bit instead what we do here is to explore and to explore the city of Glasgow let's go back in time so we can understand why this city is the way it is hi Michi hey <laughs> So the very first thing we gotta understand is that even though there is evidence of a prehistoric village the city of Glasgow didn't start to develop until the 550 which is the date when Saint Quentin here also known as Saint Munga established a religious community here in the nowadays called Glasgow So we have already talked about religion and how important this one was in the old times when it comes to develop economically and culturally a city and this religious community that St. Moon established here allowed later on the city to create a port in the Clyde River. During centuries the city grew and developed thanks to this port. Things got really interesting back in the 18th century because it was back in that time with trading with the Americas became a reality for almost every country that was not either Spain or Portugal. And people from Glasgow of course noticed it immediately. That's why they were exporting huge amounts of coal while at the same time there were merchants importing tobacco, sugar or rum which were products from the Americas and thanks to that many people here in this city became pretty much multi-millionaires now it is always very interesting to understand the history of the city but let's make a break because there's a guy singing and he sings really good <laughs> Yeah. 
how the real golden time of Glasgow occurred during the Industrial Revolution. If you don't know what happened during the Industrial Revolution, then I recommend you seeing this video of London. When the Industrial Revolution happened, Glasgow was already one of the biggest exporters of coal, heavy minerals and iron. And of course, during the First World War, this place was badly shaken. So, its economy, because it was mostly made out of mining materials. Explorers, time to make a quick visit into St. Andrew's Cathedral. Curious fact, after Henry VIII Protestant Reformation, Scotland also lived its very own Reformation, which turned the country into Presbyterianism. But in the 18th century there was a huge Irish immigration that created the necessity of a Catholic church, and that one is St. Andrew's. I told you it was a quick stop, let's go to our next destination. I know what it takes to free us. currently are in the Glasgow Central Station, which was recommended by Google. <laughs> and I have to say, it's very interesting, it looks very Scottish. Look at these buildings. I guess, explorers, it is time to continue with the story of Glasgow. Now you can understand that British people is serious because they learn about history. And you know, smart people use history to learn from the past. And that is pretty much what happened in Glasgow. Because after the First World War, the economy of Glasgow diversified. And that is pretty much why they began developing their economy in scientific fields. That is why Glasgow plays a huge role in engineering areas. So basically, here is produced some of the most relevant technology that we use nowadays. They produce satellites. They they are pioneers in renewable energy and it is also very strong in aerospace technology. In conclusion, in Glasgow is produced some of the most relevant technology that we use in our day that 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 <laughs> day a day life. Behind me is the City Council of Glasgow, which is a very beautiful building. Now there is something that calls my attention even more than the building, and that is the memorial for the fallen people during the Great War. Now, what truly calls my attention is not the memorial itself, but how respectful people is in front of it. There is a little play that says to please be respectful with the memorial, and therefore do not sit in it. And there is nobody in there, and besides that is the fact that it is completely clean. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> All right, my dear explorers, with that we have concluded our city tour in Glasgow. Na na na, of course no! We still have to see the very best of the city. The last for the end. The dessert of Glasgow. And that one is the Glasgow Cathedral. I tell my friends it's here where we begin. I say I'm better than I've ever been. It's like an enemy that's caving in. I've never been this messed up. Glasgow Cathedral, it is also known as the Cathedral of St. Mungo. If you don't remember from the beginning of the video, St. Mungo was St. Kentinghern. He's the one who established the very first religious community in Glasgow. And I can tell you guys, this is the perfect example of what a Gothic cathedral is. Look at this place, it's insane. Truly just wonderful. Nice burial dedicated to this cathedral. Look at this! Oh, I am literally speechless at this moment. So, how to explain it? Above me, above me is the main cathedral. I'm currently beneath it and I found this absolutely mind-blowing place. <laughs> So currently we are in a chapel below the cathedral. 
This chapel is 100% dedicated to Saint Mungo. And this one behind me seems to be the tomb of Saint Mungo. Oh my god, I don't know, this is this has to be one of the best cathedrals I have ever been in. Have you ever experienced that moment when something that you don't expect completely completely blow out your mind? Well, that is exactly what have just happened to me with the Glasgow Cathedral. Right at the back of the cathedral, we have the necropolis of Glasgow. Burn through the summer, I'll be back on my feet by the winter. I hope it feels like you want it, don't like it as a free man. Which it is mostly a Victorian graveyard and here are buried around 50,000 people. What's very interesting about this place is that it is located in a small hill so we can see the whole city surrounding us. <laughs> Sorry. This wow, this is a really nice place guys. People who's resting here must be sleeping very very good. Alright guys, that is it for me today. I must head to Edinburgh to return the car. Which, by the way, I'm already late. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And I, Ian Lewis, will be seeing you soon. You Glasgowish explorer, what? <laughs> you Gla... How do you say it? I guess I'm just gonna change it. You necropolis explorer. destination in this trip, the beautiful city of Edinburgh.